and shout for joy.
Well, amen. Good evening. How's everybody doing tonight? You know what? This is an awesome looking Wednesday night crowd. I think the community must have heard that I wasn't preaching tonight. That's why so many came up. And if that's the case, we're just going to tell people I'm not preaching Sunday either, okay? Now, when they show up and I do preach, we'll tell them I didn't preach. I spoke that day, okay? That way we can get, get around that. But anyways, we're grateful to have you here with us tonight. Uh, go ahead and please be seated. And as you take your seats, would you bow with me and pray? We want to make sure we invite God here tonight. Heavenly Father, we do thank you so very much that we can show up here tonight, Lord God. And this is the season, Father God, uh, to, to, uh, to worship you and what you did for us, dear Father God. We'll never, uh, never forget it, nor will we get over what you did for us, dear Father God. And God, I thank you so very much for our guests that we have here with us tonight from Amelia Baptist Church. I thank Thank you just for blessing them. Uh, may they be mindful and help them to remember their, their lines and their, and their songs. And, and may they know they're not, singing, they're not singing to us. They're singing to you. They're singing for us. So, God, I'll thank you for how you will bless this evening. We love you and thank you. In Christ's name I pray, believing. And all of God's people said? Amen. Amen. Uh, just uh, about a show of hands, how many of you are done with your Christmas shopping? Anybody done with your Christmas shopping? Okay, we got a few of you. Now, listen, on your Christmas list, if you got, if you got your Christmas list and all your names on there, you know, um, you are not totally done on your Christmas list until you have given to Lottie Moon Christmas offering. Okay, you all right with that? Because that means when, you, when we give to the Lottie Moon Christmas offering, that means that we put Jesus on our Christmas list, and we got to make sure that he's on our list. Amen? It's all about him anyway. So make sure if you have not spent time praying about it, you are just mindful and uh, just uh, letting God speak to you with the amount, the dollar amount that, you want, uh, that God wants you to give, you know, as that money goes to support over 4,800 missionaries that are around the world. Just a few more things before we uh, get, um, go any further tonight. Choir, we'll have dress rehearsal this Friday at 7.30 at the church. Uh, this Sunday morning, um, after our morning service, Services. And by the way, our choir will be, uh, will be presenting our cantata uh, this Sunday morning. Afterwards, we'll have our church-wide Christmas dinner. We just ask uh, that you bring a dessert. Everything else will be provided. Um, also, Trevor Thomas will be here with us Sunday night. If you have not you know, seen the posters around the church, uh, uh, just try to make plans to be back here Sunday night. If you've never seen him, he's a unique uh, a ministry, a drama and skits and, and some mime stuff. Great, great man of God. You'll uh, really love and appreciate that. Uh, I want to thank... Uh, Thank you for those who have already uh, um, helped out with the, uh, the toy collection. And I've seen the bin is filling up out there for the Toys for Tots. That's going to be a tremendous blessing to some kids this year. Um, also, back out here in the foyer um, on one of these tables, I forget which one, but there's somebody put five stockings out there. And also with those stockings is a, is a list you know, of items you can put in there. You know, to go to our set, the, uh, the set free ministry, which here's in Yulee, we support. And they're looking for uh, Christmas stocking to give to the men this year. And one other thing, Ms. Linda Davis spoke to me about, and that is uh, once you start getting your Christmas cards and all your other kind of mail uh, uh, this year, if you can either just cut off or rip off the stamp. Put them in a plastic bag and give them to Miss Linda Davis. She's got an idea of what she wants to do with those, and we appreciate that. Brother Richard. Let's everyone stand. We'll sing Silent Night. This will be our offertory.
children. You know, God came to all of us. But without kids, I'm afraid Christmas just wouldn't be the same. But like I tell them at the hospital, I'm glad they're yours, not mine. <laughs> right, Miss Casper? I've served my time. Thank you. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Dear God, we come to you tonight thanking you, thanking you for the many, many blessings you've given us. We thank you for these children who have come to sing for us, to sing praises to you. We thank you. Oh, we thank you. Please look down on us with favor now as we come to worship you. We worship you now with our offerings. Take it, bless it, and be with us. Help us to do thy will. In Jesus' name, amen. In the, uh, the Christmas narrative in the Bible, we know the, the wise men came from about 600 miles away. Well, the children from Amelia, they didn't come quite 600 miles, but we are still grateful they're here. Amen. Would you help me welcome them tonight? people will see our show. I wish we had more time, but time is money and Broadway budgets aren't the way they used to be. Hey, this director. I've got scripts, highlighters, paper clips, post notes, pens, pencils. I buy it all. Let's be honest. I'm the real reason the first staples closed on the island. And my schedule? Printed and laminated. Carol, you're the best. How can you be so incredibly organized? Piece of cake. I used to be Pam Helton's personal secretary. Imagine trying to find one free minute in that schedule. Okay, let's get to it. We've got a show to create. Let's start at the beginning. A very good place to start. We are here to celebrate the birth of our Savior. Hmm, birth of our Savior. Birth of, birth of... Birthday. We'll celebrate the birthday of the King of Kings.
everybody. Wonderful work today. If you do it like that for the real show, I will be very proud. But no matter what, you know the man upstairs is going to love it. What man upstairs? Like a ghost, you're scaring me. Calm down, Ava. I was talking about God. I'm sorry I scared you. Don't worry, Ava is even as scared of the dark. Well, you know what? What? You don't need to be scared with Jesus on your side. Maddie, will you read what Jesus says in John 8, 12? Sure, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. Anyone who follows me will not walk in the darkness, but will have the light of life. Wow, Jesus is like my own personal flashlight. No batteries required. <laughs> Bill! Don't be afraid, I've got some great news. Christ was born today in Bethlehem. I said, hey, don't be afraid, I've got some great news. We have come to show the way to Him. I'm here. It's okay, just take a deep breath and answer. This Carol is hello. Is hello Carol this? <sighs> Hi, this is Carol. Sorry, I must have a bad signal. I'm with Mr. Director. You're on speaker. Can you hear me now? Hello, Carol. This is Mr. Persnicky. I'm calling about this show. Oh, we are so excited. Ms. Director and I have been working very hard to make sure this Christmas special is... Carol, I'm stopping you right there. I'm pulling the plug. What? Everyone is tired of this Christmas thing. The same old story every year. Instead, I'm renting out the theater for a live taping of American Idol. A truly wonderful night. But Mr. Bersnickety... I don't have time. Ryan Seacrest is on the other line. <laughs> Carol, don't say any anything to the cast. They've been working so hard. Let's give them one last day of fun before we pull the plug. Okay, boss. 
Hello, everyone. The time is now 7 o'clock. Eva, will you lead us in prayer before you begin? No problem. Jesus, thank you for leaving heaven and coming to live with us. Thank you for loving us, healing us, and teaching us. But most of all, thank you for making a way for us to be with you forever by dying for us. Let your glory shine around us. Let your presence overflow. Fill our hearts with wonder. Let our hearts be your home. You gave up your throne to be with us. Mary and Joseph's tiny one. How could it be that God would come? Alleluia, amen. Shepherds became the first to see how God would set his people free. The hope of the world is Christ the King. Alleluia, amen. You bled and you died to save us You rose from the grave victorious Alleluia, amen So I praise you, Lord And I worship you forever And I thank you, Lord The top of scene four. Touchdown. Whoa, what are you guys doing? Doesn't scene four start with a football pass? No, that's scene seven, but great throw, guys. All right, guys, let's start at the top of scene four. Trevor, 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 perfect. Shepherds were in the fields at night. The sky opened up with angel light. They were afraid. A report was made. Unto you a child is born If you go to Bethlehem on Christmas morn You'll find him there Heaven's glory shares
Why? You guys just look and sound so beautiful, and no one's going to see it. What? Well, the cats are the bad. Go ahead and tell them, Carol. Well, I've got some good news and bad news. Yeah? Well, the bad news is he's canceling the show. What? He says that people are tired of Christmas, and that Bethlehem is just a tired old sleepy town that's not relevant anymore. Um, American Idol's replacing us? <laughs> what? Who still watches that? Yeah, it's been on since before we were born. This is crazy. <laughs> I'm sorry. I guess we're done. Let's just go. Come on, guys. Mr. Persnickety. It doesn't believe in Christmas. We can't let him cancel the show. Bethlehem is just a sleepy town. But it's the place salvation's coming down. In a little stable, simple as can be. Mary sings a welcome song <coughs> to the King of Kings. People aren't tired of Christmas, they just need to be reminded of what it's all about. Come on guys, we can't let them cancel the show. Bethlehem is baby Jesus' throne. God with us has found a humble home. In a little stable, in my little heart. When you find God's saving grace, that's when Christmas starts. What a wonderful night. Jesus Christ is born. The star shines so bright. Come let us adore. Glory to God in the highest. Peace to all of us. What a wonderful day. Mitchell, I don't care what you have to do. I need this project wrapped by Thursday. But sir, Thursday's Christmas. Oh, that's right. Well, I couldn't force you to work on Christmas. Thank you, sir. It's gonna be our dog's first Christmas. Although if you, although if you refuse to work for me, I'll be forced to fire you. I understand. See you first thing Thursday. I, I thought by the age of nine, being tough would be easier, but it didn't. I got more money I could spend in three lifetimes. A huge house, a better car than Justin Bieber, I got it all, but not a single person wished me a happy birthday. Happy birthday!
Thornbird. Hey, but there's another important birthday that we can't forget. And whose is that? Please don't cancel the show. Let's celebrate the birth of our Savior on Christmas. Happy. Snicky's birthday. Adam Lennon sent it out in a choir email. Doesn't anybody read those? Chasing the dark away, the light has come. Shining to a world that needs a friend. Filling out hearts with love, the light has come. Joy to the world that never ever
Welcome. Normally, normally I'd ask you, did you like that? I'm going to skip that part because I know you did. So since you liked it, give him one more round of applause. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> um, I want to read a scripture to you out of uh, uh, the Gospel of John, chapter 1. The title of their, uh, their musical, the Christian, uh, um, the Christmas performance, was The Light Has Come. Listen to the passage in John 1. As John speaks about Jesus, he's speaking concerning Jesus. He says this in John 1, 3, All things were made through him, and without him nothing was made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. And verse 5 says this, And the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not comprehend it. Jesus is the light of the world. And as the Gospel of John says in verse 5, that the darkness will never comprehend it. It means, the word comprehend, it means overpower, overtake it, or suppress it. So I want you to understand something tonight. That darkness, according to the authoritative Word of God, darkness will never overcome the light. It will never overpower the light. The light always wins. You get that? Jesus always wins. You know, if we was to come in here and this was a dark room and we, as soon as we turn the lights on, guess what the darkness is going to do? It's not going to negotiate and say, no, I'm not leaving. I'm going to hang out for a little bit longer. No. As soon as the lights are turned on, darkness has to go. Jesus always, always prevails. And just in case there's somebody here that's thinking, you know, uh, I'm still not convinced. I still don't understand why you Christians and you know, uh, why you just people in general can just love Christmas so much and can just, you know, you go to the extreme of, of decorating so much and, and just putting so much into it. And, and if truth be told, you're the same person that your, your bathroom at your house, your garage is decked out in either red and black, orange and blue, garnet and gold. You got some boxers in your drawers that's orange and uh, blue, and you get where I'm going with this. So if you can get carried away with that stuff, I'm going to get carried away with Jesus. You okay with that? So that's why we celebrate Christmas. Uh, just a couple days ago, my wife had a flat tire on her car and fortunately she was over in the Regency area in Jacksonville and you know, there was a lawn company that's pulled up right at the same time she did and changed out you know, the, uh, the spare for her. I can change out a tire but I wasn't there um, but if I was I would have changed it out because I'm a man also. But anyways, I'm glad there was some people there that helped her out. I got home and I got it out of the trunk today and went to repair it and fortunately it was in the, it was in the, it was in the groove the center of the tire so I was able to plug it. And so I just took my pliers, popped that screw out of there, took a plug that I had and stuck it in there. Now, as, as, as I was doing this, it, it, was, it, was, it was almost as if God would show me, just, uh, it just uh, show me a picture of him and a picture of me. You see, that tire, that tire is a picture of all of us because that tire, you know, before it was punctured, it, it, uh, it was a brand new tire. And it's a picture of brand new life. It had air in it and it sustained it and everything was going great until it was punctured. You see, Adam and Eve in the garden, they had brand new life. There's was, was like a brand new tire and everything was going great until sin punctured their lives and deflated their lives. You know, I was a 16 year old boy when I realized that I was a, I was a brand new tire, so to speak, but it's when the gospel was preached and presented to me that God the Holy Spirit turned the light on in my soul and realized that sin had punctured my life. You see, without, think about lights and what light does. You know, if that tree behind me had no, you just strip it from the ornaments and strip it with all the bright lights, it is just a dull looking tree. But with the, when you put lights on it, it just makes it just vibrate. 
And for the first 16 years of my life, I was a dull person, dull, had a dull life. But when Jesus came in, the light of the world shined in my heart and he continues to shine in me so I can shine him around the world. And here's what happened. When I stuck that plug in that tire, it fixed the puncture and I put air in it. Now it's got new life in it again. At the age of 16, I said yes to Jesus Christ. And guess what Jesus did? He stepped out of heaven and he stepped into my life and he filled and he filled that wound in my life. And so that now when he breathed life into me at salvation, not only do I have life to finish out life down here. Are you still with me tonight? I have everlasting life. First John 5, 12 says he that has the son has life and he that does not have the son Guess what? They do not have life. And we're not talking about just existence and living. If you're here and breathing, yes, you have life, you have existence. The question is, do you have eternal life? And according to the Bible, 1 John 5, 12, if you have Jesus, if there was a day and moment in your life when you prayed, you humbled your heart and surrendered and said yes to Jesus and invited Christ to come in your heart. Well, according to the Bible, you have eternal life. But if you don't have Jesus, you don't have eternal life. That's bad news, okay? But the good news is, the good news is, you can get it tonight. Would everybody just please bow your heads and hearts. If I can get our musicians to please make your way to the platform. And we, listen, uh, we are we're not going to have an altar call and sing our, our normal hymns of decision. I want them in place so they can sing our song of dismissal in just a moment. So here's what's going to happen. I want to lead you in a prayer because listen, I don't know if you are just from our community. I'm not sure if you're here visiting from Amelia Baptist Church. I just don't know. And so I want to give you the opportunity. You're here tonight. You have never prayed to receive Christ as your Savior. Sir, man, would you do it tonight? And this is not, I'm not blowing you away with brand new stuff you've never heard before. You know that Jesus is the Son of God and He came to do what you could not do. You, you know all the facts, you know it all, but as of right now, all you have is information from the, from the Word of God. You don't have transformation because you have still been saying no to Jesus. Friends, I want to encourage you, stop saying no and say yes to Christ. Hey, what an awesome time to be saved and surrender your life is at Christmas time. If you're here tonight, sir, ma'am, and you've never had prayed to receive Christ as your Savior, would you do it tonight? Listen, I'm going to lead you in this prayer of repentance, but don't pray it to me because I can't save you. Pray it to the Father and mean it, okay? So pray this after me, and uh, you can just pray it out loud if you want to. You can pray it softly, or you can pray it in the attitude of your heart. It does not matter. I promise you God is listening, and God will hear you. You ready? Say, Dear Lord Jesus, I admit that I'm a sinner. I need to be saved, and I want to be saved. Uh, um, only you, Jesus, can save me. Tonight, I accept you as my Savior and as my Lord, and from this day forward, I will live for you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Thank you so very much for being here tonight. Would you stand with us? And as you stand to your feet, let me give you some final instructions before we dismiss tonight. And if, you, if you're home church, you're, you're a member here at Black Rock, or you're visiting from our area, and you just prayed tonight to receive Christ as your Savior, would you come and just share it with me? I want to encourage you on the, on the, on the, next, uh, the next step you need to do in following through with Believer's Baptism. If you're a parent of one of these kids, or even a grandparent, or just a friend of one of the families that you're visiting from Amelia Baptist Church, and you tonight prayed for the first time, listen, don't come up here and say, I'm going to be baptized here. You go back and see Brother Neil Helton. You let him know you made a personal decision to receive Christ as your Savior, and I promise you, he'll be more than happy to walk with you through the next steps of what to do with Believer's Baptism. So thank you so very much for being here. Amelia Baptist Church, thank you all so very much. We thoroughly enjoyed uh, having you tonight. God bless you. Y'all have a Merry Christmas. And uh, if you would, just reach out to your neighbor across you. It's how we do it here at Black Rock. We're going to sing our song of dismissal at this moment.